We're Just Got Played, and today we are gaming through the alphabet. So what does that mean? This is our series where we go through all the games, A through Z, and tell you our favorite game that's published that starts with that letter, and also the top rated game on BGG, or Game Geek, that starts with that letter. Um, so if you've missed any of our previous videos, they're linked in the uh, comments uh, below uh, in the description of this video, so go check those out. But in this video, we're going to be covering the letters J, K, and L. All right, E-Rock, why don't you kick us off? Excellent. J, K, and L, my favorite three letters of the alphabet. This is fantastic. <laughs> this, this will be nice and smooth tonight. So I'll tell you what, talking about smooth, I'm going right to Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd. What is your J game today? My J game. So this was another trouble letter for me. Not a lot of games I played that I liked with J or that I even played with J. Um, so I went with um, just one of the games that I played, which is just one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so in just one, um, it is a simple party game. Um, Person has to guess a word or a phrase or whatever's on the, 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 the clue card. And everyone around the table on a single word on their little erasable tablet and um, can't discuss it with anybody. They all flip their cards around. And if anyone has any duplicate words, they have to get put down. So, if, for example, if someone, if the, if the word is like, <laughs> And someone says, you know, jet, and someone else says jet. Um, and they, when everyone reveals, jet is now off the table. And hopefully there's some other semi descriptive words that's going to help someone get to airplane or whatever the, the guess is. Um, so it's, it's like, it's like double, double uh, kind of deduction or uh, I don't know what that would be considered. You know, they're trying to figure out the clue. You're trying to figure out what not to write so that other people don't guess your word. And then you, sometimes you go way out on a limb and like, oh, I, I'm going to say something very crazy. And someone else has the same exact thought. And then, you know, your, your super clever clue is now gone because three other people had the same idea as you did. Um, so that's that's my J, just one. Very quick. What does it play up to like eight, 12? I mean, I, I guess think seven out of the box. However, I think. Many, however many dry erase boards you have. But yeah, like really. People can play just one. Although the more people you get in, it's almost harder because if you get 20 people in, they're probably going to match a whole lot of words and you might not yeah. have a whole lot left. Uh, That's I, true. I, I hear you. That's a really good game. We've played with everyone from Jacoby, who's 12, all the way up through my parents who are in their 70s. Uh, everybody we've played this game has really enjoyed it. It's simple. It's easy to learn. It's a lot of fun for the table. Good choice. Yeah. Just so one. So easy to teach. And then, you know, there are a lot of these games where you're trying to be clever about your clue because you want some people to get it and others to not. But this is cooperative. Yeah. But so just the tension is you want to be clever about your clue so that nobody else is giving the same clue as you. Right. So it still has that cleverness, but it's cooperative. It's great. Yep. Absolutely. OK. Moving from smooth to smooth. Jim, Jim, <laughs> JJ, what do you have for the letter J? I thank you. Senior El Grande. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So, Jay, I had trouble. Not going to lie. I had trouble. Didn't have a lot of Jays either. Um, so, let's see here. This is the game, Jay, where you, you take the build, the little blocks and you make little buildings and you have a, it makes it like a little, little cam. Link, wait a second. I was linking logs. Never mind. This is... Uh, <laughs> Well, let's see. I was wondering here. if you're going with Jenga. <laughs> I was. Good guess. Yes, yes. I was going with Jenga until I looked over at my shelf because Jenga was my game I was going to pick, but it's actually my follow up. I only picked Jenga because I didn't have any other J's. And if somebody has a Jenga built on, I, I can't help myself. My fingers get twitchy and I have to, I have to do, I have to blow my fingers and do the thing. So if anybody challenges me to a game of Jenga, I'm in. I'll just play it. That's all there is to it. If somebody has it. And then you can go to the bar and they have the big Jenga with the two by four. So, I'm Jenga everywhere now. Jenga on a boat. I could Jenga on a boat. Challenge me, Jenga on a boat. I will play Jenga. But I'm going to give a little shout out to our long lost man, uh, member of the group, uh, one Mr. Corey Goff. He came up with a game recently and I see it over my shelf and I actually just wrote it down. I was like, hmm. So I'm going to give a shout out to him and his buddy Kevin. Uh, they made a game called Jinja uh, recently. Uh, I have it. I 
played through the the play the play testing and then i was like oh wow as soon as i played it i'm like yep i'm gonna get this and when it was on the shelf for for buy officially i went and bought it and i play it now with newbies it's a great game jinja is a japanese based area control game you have like public actions you can do and you go in the different regions of japan you want to put your little shrine on top of there to get the most points there's three rounds and there's like little events that happen during each one. Well, actually, it's five rounds, five rounds or seasons or something like that. Um, and then uh, that starts at the beginning of the round. So basically, uh, you have building cards at the beginning of the day, uh, beginning of the game. There's three different levels. There's easy, medium and hard. And what you're wanting to do is uh, turn in little shrines. Um, which are like these little tokens. Uh, there's four types and you want to turn in a differing number of each type to build a shrine in that specific region. And you have more shrines in the region, you end up winning the game. And then there's gold that you can just buy stuff with. And then when you build the, the buildings on there, you get a little ability. Some of it's for the end of the game, some of it's in between rounds, some of it's during the round. So it's, it's great because you have um, your, you start out with nothing and then you can build up and then you get the little combos because guess who loves his combos? This guy right here. So you get your combos going and then, you know, it's it's really easy to learn. And then a lot of new people that are new to gaming can understand it. And it has good, great playthrough because you don't know which building you're going to get the next round and what you're going to be pulling. There's a little bit of luck because you have to draw out of the bag to get all the construction parts, the shrines to build the buildings and stuff like that. So those guys did a great job uh, with the game. So I hope everybody goes and picks up a copy and uh, supports our, our channel member there with the with the, the game he built or the, the game he made, uh, Jinja. Go check it out. Excellent. That's uh, JJ, Jim, Jam, Jen, Jenga, and Jinja all <laughs> in the same conversation. It's a mouthful. Same How <laughs> about you, Stephen? What is your J game? So, yeah, I don't know. A few, a few of you have mentioned that you had trouble with Jay, that you struggled with Jay. I did not. I, you know, I started going down my list of favorite games and I hit a Jay pretty early because just one is a fantastic party game. Yeah. And Lloyd, Lloyd, this is a three way crossover because Board Game Geek also says just hey! one is the highest rated Jay. Game. It's not hey. just me and babe. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> BGG likes something I like. Imagine that. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Great game. Yep. Great game. Okay. Well, I have a feeling we might have another crossover. So, babe, do you want to start us off? Do we? I don't I don't know if we do have another crossover. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of pressure now, and I'm not really sure that I can live up to it. Um, but I will tell you, I, I did for a moment consider picking just one because it makes it to our table a lot compared to some of our other games. Um, so it was really tempting, but I kept going through Jay's, I was digging through, and I found one that I decided, you know what, I probably haven't played this one as much as Just One. And maybe I don't laugh as much when I play it as Just One, but this one has a special place in my heart. It's a special two player game that I was taught by uh, Mr. Blue Muck, and we used to play it early in our relationship, so it's got a special place in my heart, and that is Jaipur. And so Jaipur is a two-player game where it's a card game where you're trying to collect sets of jewels. Um, and you, so basically, there are, I don't know, however many, five maybe cards on the table, um, and you have to pick, are you going to take um, some and trade some from your hand? Are you going to trade... Are you going to take all the camels, which the camels are like, I think, wild, not wild. They're like, they're, it's a different, the camels are for something else. You, you just got to play it. Just trust me on it. Um, but are you going to take your the, all the camels this turn? Are you going to take some of the jewels? So it kind of gives away what you're collecting, but it gets you more points. Are you um, going to try to go for the more plentiful lower point jewels so that you can kind of try to get the low hanging fruit? Or are you going to try to go after the more expensive higher uh, quality jewels and, and try to get points from those. So um, it's a fun game. It takes about, I'd say, 30 minutes to play. Um, so it's a nice quick game that you can get on the table and off pretty quickly. It's a nice um, intro, like first game that if you're doing a couples game night or something, it's a great first game. It's a great filler game if you're doing looking for something to fill a little bit of time um, for two players. It's just a great game all around. And it's, it's a small it's just a card game so it's you can 
put it in a backpack or a purse or whatever and carry it around with you. And it's not, it doesn't take a lot of room. So that's it. Jaipur. I agree, babe. Jaipur is fantastic. Um, the, the camels go off on their own little collection and then whoever has the most of them scores extra points, but you can switch them out for actual cards to go in your hand. You know, the first couple of times you play this, it almost feels like an uh, overglorified kind of rummy where you're just kind of collecting things and turn it in. It's really a couple of plays into it that you really start seeing the different layers of what do I put out? What do I trade for? What do I risk putting out there for my for my opponent to get? You know, and you wait for these special times in the game. Like if your opponent has seven cards, they're kind of locked. You can't because you can't have more than seven cards. So you're almost safe to make some really dangerous moves at that point, putting things out on the board, because now they're going to have to basically like sacrifice everything that they've been doing just to get those extra cards or go ahead and cash out and get the points. Uh, it's a really delectable little game. I think it's fantastic. And um, I called it. It's the crossover because it is also my J game as well. Jaipur is fantastic. This is absolutely top three of my favorite two player games in the world. Uh, it's it's really good. I, and like I said, it's something you play a couple of times. You're like, OK, that was cool. And then the more you play it, the more you really start to see this and start to really kind of grasp what's going on with all the different things. And it becomes really intriguing. Uh, I like it a lot. Babe and I have played a lot. I'll tell you what, this is the third crossover we've had in this series. And if nothing else, at least people watching, we're a gaming couple. These are games we like to play together. So anything that we've mentioned and crossed over with, that's a really good suggestion if you're looking for something to play two players because they're games that we love. So I'm with you, babe. J for Jaipur. And that pretty much. J for Jaipur. And that, uh, and don't forget the koala. Nope, nope, the panda. It's all about the panda camel. That's what the whole game is about. Yes. Oh, that's right. There's one card that has a cute little panda hanging onto the camel. And that, if you get that card, there's no official rule that says you're the automatic winner. <laughs> but I have decided you are the automatic winner. If you that's true. Card. To be clear, it has nothing to do with anything. It is one card with special art with a panda on it. But in our house, that means you. You won the game. I mean, I, I've, you know, not I really. played this game a couple of times and I don't remember that at all. Are there different <laughs> printings? Did I just miss it? Oh, man. <laughs> now I'm going to have everybody looking for the panda. That's what excellent. Well, good. That means you all have Jaipur in your house and you'll have a good time playing it. Okay. Now, I think that pretty much wraps up our J's. Now we're going to move on to OK. Yes. K. <laughs> yes. <laughs> excellent. Okay, excellent. All right. So I'll tell you what. Um, you all know me. I like the uh, back to back turns. So I'm going to go first on the K. And I think we might have another crossover here. Just saying. So my K game is a game out of Poland, I believe. It was made by the Museum of History and it is called Koleszka. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's basically a game about cold, about the cold war, the way the people lived during the cold war in Poland. And it's about how bad it was basically being there because like every round, there's a shipment of goods that come in, but it's never enough. All right. Like there's only a handful of things and all you send all of your family members out to go shopping for all this stuff. And like I said, very little goods that come in. The things that, are, that do come in, they're not all that great. And all of your family members are lined up at all these stores to get this stuff. And then what you do is you play these cards out of your hand, which are things like, I'm going to report you to the party. And it like pulls you out of the line and puts you somewhere else. Or, you know, oh, I, I got a baby. I borrowed somebody's baby to move to the front of the line or something else weird that flips the whole line around. So this whole thing is really queue management. And I'm pretty sure the word koleżka actually is queue in polish so so that's you know one of those things it sounds awesome in english but really it just means the thing that it is <laughs> you know but i absolutely love koleszka i think it's fantastic it's a whole lot of fun to play uh if you know me we're i at least and babe a lot too we're into really heavy euros this is not that this is a fun kind of a fun take that because you never really destroy anybody in this game you just kind of move them around in the line now they didn't get the couch they wanted they ended up getting a bottle of whiskey or something you know so it's kind of like that. We have a lot of fun playing it. It might be hard to get, but everybody in the world's welcome to come over to our house and we'll be happy to play it with you. Not My at game, the same time. Not at the same time. Good point. Yeah, it it only plays like first. five. Right? <laughs> you have to get in line. 
Oh, yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> awesome. So in the hopes of a crossover, I'm going to turn it over to Babe. Babe, what's your K? My K, it wasn't even close. Wasn't even a close call. There was only one K for me, and it was Kaleshka. Yeah, yeah, that's what yep. I'm talking about. Yep. Talking about communists, the end of the communist era, and the the tribulations of the people of 308. There's, it's, you, I, I'm not even going to begin to say that you understand what it's like to live in communist Poland after playing this game, but but you absolutely feel tension in this game of what resources am I going to be able to get? Is it what I need? Am I close enough to the front to get what I want? What are they getting? What cards do they have? Um, there's definitely tension in this game that builds as you're trying to um, get the things for your family that you need. And I went as far as to ask to put this on our 10 by 10, if you remember, because I liked this game so much. So yeah, for me, it was it was an easy choice. It was Flashka. Absolutely. Good job, babe. That's like our fourth crossover, I think. So almost like we play games together. Almost like that. It's crazy. <laughs> so for, for those who don't know what a 10 by 10 is, that's where you pledge to play 10 games 10 times in a calendar year. Yeah, the calendar we year is correct. We did make that pledge. We ended up playing 100 games two times each as opposed to 10 games 10 times each. But that's just so you So you failed. <laughs> we changed the rules and we played a variant. There you go. We played a variant. Right. We have an erasable chalk marker that we sure. use for our <laughs> We kept changing the names. We're like, we're never going to play that 10 times. And then we put something else on there that we played twice. And be like, no, no, we're going to play that 10 times. Yeah, we, <laughs> so. have since taken, we have since taken Kaleshka <laughs> off, unfortunately. <laughs> we never played 10 games of it. Indeed. Anyway, that is Terrific Pace's K game. And now we will pass it along to Steve. Steve, what is your K game? Well, probably not a surprise to anybody here because I like um, uh, the key games, uh, but I think the standout game in that series is Keyflower. Um, and so that's my K game. And what makes Keyflower special is it's it's got a lot going on, but it's mostly a worker placement game and an auction game. So, and it's simultaneous. That's what really makes it interesting. Uh, so you can put these workers out to activate these tiles uh, on your turn, or you could put the workers out to bid on the tiles to get them to put them in your tableau. Why do you care if the tiles are in your tableau? Well, the tiles that are in your tableau, when they get activated, then at the end of the round, all the workers on your tiles um, become your workers for the next round because other people could activate the tiles in your village, you know, in your tableau. Um but then the other interesting thing that's going on here, you know, particularly from a, an auction perspective, is that there are different colors of workers there. Everybody starts off with, you know, like red, yellow, blue, I think. But yeah, then there are correct. special the buildings to give you. Yeah. yeah, the green are something that you can earn special. But when you open a bid on one of the buildings in the center or when you activate one of the buildings, whether it's in somebody else's area or in the center, you can activate the buildings that are on offer in the auction um, before somebody's even claimed them. When you first do that, you establish the color that is the currency for that tile for the rest of the round. Um, and, you know, it's it's also one of those worker placement games. There's a lot of different spins of worker placement. You know, there's somewhere you just block when you use something. There's somewhere you bump. Well, in Keyflower, it just makes it more expensive. So if you put one uh, meeple on a thing, the next person can come along. And as long as they use that same color meeple, they can put two out and they can activate it. And somebody else could do three and activate it, et cetera. You might just put two out to be a jerk the first time you activate it. So the next person has to pay three of them, you know? Um, so there's a, you know, a lot of interesting stuff going on here from wanting to get the tiles versus wanting to use the tiles, wanting to collect, uh, you know, meeples of a given color and then making sure that color is what's established on those things that you want to use. Just a lot of tension because on your turn, there's like a dozen things you want to do and you're no way you're going to get to do them all because somebody's going to mess you up. So, you know, which one are you going to jump out and do first? Um, yeah. So anyway, and I, you know, I like auction games. I like work replacement games. This is a great combination of those. It also has pick up and deliver, which is one of my favorite things. It's not my favorite thing about this game. If that bothers you, check out the key to the city, London, which has 
like route building in place of the uh, pick up and deliver. Um, but yeah, a lot of good games in this series, but Keyflower is the best one. <laughs> I played once like seven or eight years ago, so I didn't feel like I remembered enough of it to to evaluate it. Uh, but uh, we did recently do an unboxing, which I'm sure you can see on the channel. Uh, so it is on our short list. We're going to get to the table soon. Maybe we can do a group review, as it were. Anyway, nice. moving on from uh, that K to the next K. JJ, it's your turn for K. I turn for K? Okay. So <laughs> this one, I believe I got my notes right here. All right. So I had another issue with K like yeah. I did with J. I didn't have a lot of choices um, that I had played, uh, but I will say this game that I have is one of my favorite of the genre. Um, so I'm going to put it on here because probably not a lot of people know about it because they don't really play these type of games. I'm a big tactics guy. So if anybody has heard of a tactics game like Final Fantasy Tactics, Ring of Red is an old school game that I used to love to play on the PS2. Um, my K game is Crossmaster Arena. Okay. Uh, so nice. It's, yeah, it's 100% a tactics game in a board game form. I love it. I love the little pieces. They're probably around here somewhere, but uh, you have the little chibi type pieces. I think I don't even know if chibi was a thing really back then. I don't even know how long ago it came out. But uh, the Crossmaster comes from the waifu genre. I don't know if anybody knows about that um, that genre of types, something like that. But anime characters with big heads. Uh, so basically a tactics game in general is you have characters, you build a team. Uh, sometimes you have like a points value of each character. So you can't just have like a bunch of overpowered characters. So you have like a, you know, you have 10 points and every character has a different value depending on what their abilities and movement are. Uh, but you create a team, you go in, usually it's one versus one, you versus another person or you versus the computer. Uh, and uh, I love tactics mobile games. I love tactics video games. And they, they cross messages did so well with their story building and the little figures and the trees like on the board and picking up the coins and stepping on the crates and like line of sight and everything like that. Uh, I'm not a big uh, minis type person. So, you know, playing like Warhammer and Star Wars Legion and all that stuff. I just like the fact that you can, you know, buy all the expansions and people you can bring it to the table and everybody can choose which character they want. Um, but basically each character has like special attacks they can do and they have so many points they can use on their turns. So you, each player has a team, save like two or three characters and you're taking turns moving your characters or using attacks on your characters or like destroying trees or boxes to get extra stuff. So you're trying to build up your attacks. And then once you get close enough within range uh, for an attack to another player's character, you can attack them and then you can, you know, use your movement in any way you want and attacking. So you can attack and run away and then they have to, you know, try to get it within range. So I'm a big um, like sniper type person. So I'll use like a ranger on all my teams and just sit there and just pick my opponent off from far away and then run away before they can attack me because they're using melee characters. Um, so uh, very much guerrilla tactics. That's just my personal favorite just to be like annoying and stuff like that. Uh, so they did a really good job in Crossmasters and all the characters have like very different effects, but they are some good effects in there. So they're not too overpowered. They're kind of balanced if you make the right team. Um, so I just haven't heard a lot about the game, uh, unfortunately, but yeah, every time I bring it around new people, they really like to play it and they just play the heck out of it. Um, so I got a couple boards and, the, you know, about eight to 10 characters. So everybody just kind of pairs off and plays the game by themselves and they come back and I've always wanted to run a tournament of it, but it's just, it's not super popular, but I really like it as far as the tactics and I, I play a lot of tactics games. So that's my K. Nice. Okay. Crossmaster Arena. Crossmaster Arena. I was, I, have, I was close to buying that back in the day, and I just I didn't. I don't know why. <laughs> is yeah, that the one what was that? I asked Eric, is that the one that we have? I know it's a yeah, it's on the shelf. Yeah, right? yeah, I love the like. It's so cute. The the characters, the artwork, it's like even the little crates are adorable. Yes. They're super super cute. I like yeah. I like the look of this game. It's I'm too care bear for it, but I like the look that. Of that both of those things are true. Yes. It is super cute. <laughs> she loves that, but she's too much of a Care Bear to play a tactics versus game. That is correct. We all watch people play. I'll watch <laughs> yeah. JJ and Eric play this game. Oh, it's on now. There you go. Yeah, we can do that. You get a team going. Yeah. Nice. And of course, rounding out our, our K's, we have the editor extraordinaire, Lloyd. 
with his selection for K. So my K is very, 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 very basic. And everyone here has probably played it. And if you haven't played it, I'm sure everyone's seen it. It's on pretty much every store shelf. It's on like Target. It's in Walmart. It's everywhere. Um, Wingspan. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, It is King of Tokyo. Um, Okay. And there's other games that do what it does better, but this is my top K. Um, I have some other K games and they're just kind of eh, like... I really like King Domino, but um, it's it's just not as fun and visceral as uh, as King Tokyo. So King of Tokyo, if, if you haven't played it before, um, it's essentially Yahtzee with punching each other in the face. Um, so you get big kaijus and um, you are trying to basically king of the hill inside of Tokyo. So you take your monster, you get in Tokyo. And then everyone is attacking you if you're in Tokyo. And if you're in Tokyo, you are attacking everyone outside of Tokyo and basically trying to stay alive um, to gain points. Um, So you can win by either getting to, is it 20 points? Or you can knock it, basically knock everyone else out. Um, What makes it fun is um, there's these cards that come out that are basically power-up cards. And as you um, roll the dice, You can either get claws, you can get numbers, um, you can get hearts, or you can get um, energy. They're little lightning bolts. And when you collect enough energy, you can take that energy and buy these cards. And some of the cards are super overpowered and do like one big thing. Some of them will, you know, extend your life or it's a giant card. I don't think there's any duplicates. It's just like 50 cards or 60 cards in the base game alone. And they're just all crazy over the top effects. Yeah, and like are, laser eyes or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, just enhance and, and your monster. Right. Yeah. And it's it's just it's Yahtzee. Um you you roll the dice, you have three chances, you take what you want to, you know, keep what you want to keep and roll the rest and try to knock everybody else out or get a bunch of points and win. Um it's super simple. Um I've played it, it's the, the the main reason I got the game, um, and I don't tell these stories very much anymore because I don't play many games with my mom anymore, but I was always trying to get her to play something other than May I or Rummy because or Rummy Q because that's all she wanted to play. Um, so this was a game, and the way I explained it to her was, it's like Yahtzee. And then when we set it up and played it, she understood the grasp, like the card she didn't really get. I had to walk her through, like, you should buy that card. It's really good. Um but she got the the idea of Yahtzee and understood what was happening, and we played it. Um, but I've I've given it as gift to you know nephews, and I've played it with tons of different people. It's very simple. They have tons of expansions with all kinds of characters. They have a follow on that's King of New York that overcomplicates everything. Um, but that's my that's my K King of Tokyo. Everyone's played I, it, yeah. I'm assuming. Have yeah, you played absolutely. the Dark Edition? I have not. How, what do they change in that? Well, so there's like this, uh, is it called like the evolution track or something? Mm -hmm. Uh, It makes, I think it's ones actually a little bit better. So you you move up on this separate track that gives you some special powers that normally you would get from something else. Um, But uh, I I like that edition of the game. I like the art from the dark edition as well. Um, You know, uh, if you want a bunch of expansions and stuff, I'm not sure like everything matches. I mean, you can get the power ups and, yeah. you know, shuffle those in or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, if you're just going to have King of Tokyo um, and that whatever it was, that evolution board, it's not a separate board in this game, right? It's on the board and you can move up on it. But they sell that as like a promo to put in regular King of Tokyo because people were asking for it because it was so popular. So oh, okay. um, I, I think it's a nice addition to the game and it's not overcomplicated. And like I said, it just sort of makes, you know, now if you roll a one in King of Tokyo, you're just like, well, re-roll. that's like an auto re-roll, right? right? Nobody wants to save ones, but it, now there's a reason to maybe think, oh, maybe I will keep those ones, you know, or if you, you end up with ones in your last roll, you're like, oh, okay, well, at least I get that. And let, unless you get that one card that's requiring you to get one of each die to like get a bunch of points. <laughs> it's like right. one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, a claw and a whatever. You have to have like one of each. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's not a reason to keep a one, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah I like uh, I like After Dark, and then uh, I like like you said, a lot of new people like King of Tokyo, so it's, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, and there's no duplicates, but you can have like two heads and two tails, which still both get you an extra die. <laughs> that's so right. Yeah, you yeah, have both exactly. of those, which I've done that yeah. before. So you're rolling eight die at a time, so that's great. Yeah, <laughs> and like you said, King of New York is just a case study, and stop trying to over gamify a good game. Right. I've never actually played it. I've just heard about it and you know watched you know plays of it and i'm just like eh, yeah hey, you're there's, there's no reason oh game. man no reason haters i like king of new york oh, interesting we're gonna more have things a kaiju battle here on the channel interesting. next time next time kaiju battle on the channel live you heard it here I, first. I'm, kaiju. I'm good i like that as long as i'm not godzilla or not mecha godzilla <laughs> all right deal all right, so that pretty much rounds out our case. Well, which we yep. have oh, we've the got board game geek. geek, the board game geek number one, which Kolejka. is a big one you can't forget about. <laughs> it's Kingdom Death Monster. Ah, All right, Kingdom so Death Monster. Yes, I don't think any of us have played it, and I know very little about it. It's a dungeon crawl, maybe. I don't know. Iraq, why don't you tell us? About it? Yeah, not, as you say, none of us have actually played this. I, I watched some videos on it back in the day. It's quite a while, so I'm kind of drawing, drilling down into that memory to try to tell you what's going on here. Uh, but basically, it is a giant Kickstarter project. Uh, probably one of the reasons that none of us have it in here. It was like the initial release was like $600, uh, but you got a giant bunch of stuff with it. Uh, it's quite frankly, very gothic and dark. Uh, I think the whole concept of the game is everybody kind of wakes up somewhere. We don't know really where. It's kind of just like a gray plane and it's dark. And then you just kind of very slowly walk out from that and see what's going on in this world that you found yourself in. And it's all kind of dark, nightmarish creatures that are out there that you end up battling and things like that. Uh, it's pretty harsh from what I remember reading about. Is like, Sounds like Dark Souls. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. But like, think of that darker so that really you can only see like inside a glow. Like if you have light, that's it. You see inside okay. with that. That's it. And like Which really nightmarish like creatures that are like combinations of like women and deer and alligators and stuff. And they just it's just crazy stuff. But it has a very strong <laughs> following, which must mean that the game must be very good. Uh Maybe someday we'll get around to it, though I, I doubt it. But people like, like an it. episode of Devil Man or something. <laughs> yeah, Women exactly. Deer. So sorry, geek. I didn't mean to almost skip you there. So got the geek in. <laughs> All right. So that'll wrap up our case, and we will go to the L. Uh, since Babe has decided to come back to us, Babe, why don't you start with the L? Okay. So. This is a game that I played um, early on in my gaming career, and um, I really enjoyed it. It was from the D&D world, so it takes locations and um, creatures and stuff from D&D and turns it into a worker placement, which is my jam. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I picked Lords of Waterdeep. So Lords of Waterdeep is um, it's a strategy game and it's you are placing your workers in the buildings or the locations that are available to you. You're trying to gather uh, people in your party, clerics and priests, or well, those same thing. But uh, like you don't know, clerics and uh, ninjas, warriors, and mages, thieves. Warriors. Yeah, yeah. You're gathering these people, with these fighters, to go with you on these adventures or these quests. Um, you are buying property and placing it on the board to try to generate income. You are trying to, um, trying to, you're just trying to, to build whatever little system you can so that you can get as many points as you can. Um, this is a, is a really accessible game, I think, for new people to the hobby or people that aren't super familiar with more complicated games. I played this game with my son. Um, he's 12 right now. And he, after we played it, he, he won. And then he said it was his favorite game that we've ever played. So, and he played, he won against like seasoned gamers. We, That's he true. Did not, he did not 
get let win. I never let him win. He won fair and square and it became his favorite game. And um, so it's just so much fun. And it's a great little, uh, little, I say little, it's still a, a great game. It's not little, but um, it's, it's not a super heavy worker placement Euro type game. So I really like Lords of War D. Plus, it kind of escalates as you go because it starts out very trim, just the things on the board. But basically, every turn, somebody gets a chance to put a building on the board and that expands the options and makes it a little bit more complex because now you have different things going on and things like that. And uh, I, I agree. This is a really good game. Uh, I I would highly recommend playing with the corruption that I forget what that scoundrels of scoundrels of school Yes, the corruption's yeah. fantastic. That's just like an extra bump. That's a whole letter grade better for me, just throwing the, sc- the scoundrels in there. I was very corrupt when I first played that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I believe I that. all the corruption. Um, so <laughs> just uh, one thing, Lords of Waterdeep, in my group, we play a lot of games, but Lords of Waterdeep is one that every we many, many years, everybody keeps like, I don't know if I'm going to get another heavy game. I don't know what to play. And Lords of Waterdeep hits the table. Yeah, and it's evergreen games. for sure. I agree. Yeah, and it, it is often cited as a uh, good gateway game for worker placement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I understand that because the theme is accessible. It makes sense to a lot of people. I think it's a little bit more complex than your than your general, you know, gateway game. But at the same time, it's it really draws people in in a way that other gateway games don't. It's very engaging. So good choice, babe. So far, you are winning the L. Next yeah. up, we are going to go to, well, two L's. Lloyd, what is your L, sir? The L- L- Lloyd. My L is the only game that I have on BGG rated as a 10. Uh, it is it is my number one game. Um, it's I think it's made some other of our lists, but it has my uh, favorite theme, which is Marvel characters. <laughs> it has my favorite mechanic, which is deck building. And it is legendary. And I'll go with the whole system, but specifically legendary Marvel. Um, so there are other legendaries mixed in there. There's uh, they have legendary Big Trouble in Little China, legendary 007, legendary Buffy, um, aliens and, they have and predator. Legendary, and, yeah. Well, that's that's Counters. a subset legendary encounters, which is oh a different system, but similar. Um, but I'm going to specifically talk about legendary Marvel because that's my that's what I have rated as the top and um, the. Basic gist of the game is you are essentially a shield agent. You're not playing the heroes. You are essentially putting together a team of heroes and everyone has the same access to the same team of heroes, essentially. So you're gonna take five five heroes and mix their decks together. And you are assembling a team of these heroes and fighting a mastermind who is also um, trying to complete a scheme And he has a villain deck that is comprised of uh, some villain groups, some henchmen groups. Um, There'll be some bystanders in there. There's some scheme twists, which tie into the scheme. And then there's some master strike cards, which tie into the mastermind themselves. Um, So what you're doing is you build your team. Um, There's a little city track. Um, So every turn, it's a deck builder. You're going to recruit cards. There's two currencies. One currency lets you buy recruit characters and the other um, currency lets you attack the mastermind or the villains. And um, there's a little track that's the city and the villains will come out of the deck and march their way through the city. And you are playing to kind of stop those guys from doing that. But the main goal is to take down the mastermind, which you have to attack him four times and defeat him. Um, but all the while you're also fighting the scheme. So there's a there's a lot of modularity to the game where you can mix and match all different things. Um, and just swapping out the heroes or swapping out the mastermind or the scheme and keeping everything else the same will give you a completely different play. Um, the game itself is listed as a semi-co-op. There are points on the on all the bad guys. Um, but I never played. We played it the first few times, counting the points, but we just played as a straight co-op because at the end of the day, you <laughs> you are going to win or lose 
And if someone's losing in points, they can just tank the entire table so that you, everyone loses. Um, so there's really no real reason to play it as a as a semi co-op and compete. You're competing for bragging rights, but if you're getting somebody and you're playing competitively, trying to like I'm going to win or I'm going to take the team down, it, it's no fun. Um, but that is my that is my all time great. These two boxes here are like three thousand cards, maybe more. I have pretty much every expansion that came out up until about four or five years ago. Um, I kind of quit buying them um, just because I had so many cards. Um, but as we were talking before the video, if you're going to get one expansion with Legendary that will round out and you don't need to buy anything else, Legendary and then Dark City, which I did cover in my Legendary versus Marvel Champions video. That's like the one expansion that you should get. The rest are all gravy, but that's the one you need. That is my L. Um, I could go on about the other legendaries that are in there, um, but I'm specifically picking legendary Marvel. The other ones are great. They're fun. They're not as expanded, and they um, the legendary encounters are is a little bit of a different system. Um, but it's you're right. On. I actually I got that confused in my head when you said it. That is different. In fact, Tiffany and Jacoby love this game. They we I played a ton of this legendary with them, the deck builder. So, yep, I'm I'm on board now. We're on the same train. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. I too have my own legendary boxes and legendary bag. It has its own bag. Indeed. I don't, I don't think I've ever played legendary. Oh, we can fix yeah, it. Yeah, you. Oh, you're right. Now I got all screwed up again. You play DC deck builder. Yeah. Oh, you can play that too. Gotcha. And okay. I do not like DC deck builder. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just going to confuse everything here for a couple of minutes. And Way uh, to go. <laughs> yay. <laughs> so. I'll just go ahead and talk about my game. Uh, so for my pick, I went with Lisboa. Uh, this is a a very complex, heavy Euro. Uh, I don't want to get into a whole lot of the mechanisms because they're all interrelated. There is a bit of card play and the cards have multiple uses where they have a, a value on the top if you tuck that way and a value on the bottom if you tuck that way or you play them straight as the card value kind of a thing. But basically the, the theme of the game is, I don't know what year it was, but at a certain point in history, the city of Lisbon, Lisboa, uh, was devastated by three catastrophes. There was uh, an earthquake, a tidal wave or whatever, and a fire that destroyed the entire city. And this all happened like, like on the heels of each other at this point in time. So the point of this game is that you're rebuilding the city of Lisboa. Uh, this is... Like I said, uh, very complex, everything wheels within wheels. What do I want to do? And then like, once you figure out what you want to do, you have to backtrack like seven steps to figure out how to get there kind of a thing. Um, but we really enjoy this designer. Uh, I think probably the gallerist was very close to, if it wasn't for Gloomhaven, I think the gallerist would have probably been my G. Uh, but uh, Tiff and I both love this designer. His designs are intricate and delicate and they just work really well. Uh, so my game is Lisboa, and I have a pretty good feeling I'm not going to cross over with the geek. So I got mine out of the way. Steven, what do you have? And will you cross over with the geek? I'm not going to cross over with the geek uh, because it hasn't been mentioned yet. My L game is El Grande. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, my L game is a game that I have also done a versus video for because there recently was a new printing of it. So I did a video on Libertalia versus Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, uh, if you want to go check that out. Um, so I, I like these kinds of games where you're trying to figure out <clears throat> what it is that your opponents are doing. Uh, and that's, you know, a really important part to this game. So in this game, uh, you're pirates and you're going on three different voyages and each voyage is a multi-day journey. And uh, on each day, you're going to everybody will simultaneously play a card <clears throat> and those cards get uh, resolved based on what basically what's written on the card, the number and orders. The interesting thing is, is you all have the same cards at the start of the game. Um, and then, so it, 
on the first voyage, you all have the same cards, uh, but you'll play different sets of them. So at the end of the first voyage, you'll have slightly different cards than other people. And then you'll all get new cards to also go into your hand with your leftover cards. All those new cards are the same. So your hands will sort of drift, but be fairly common. Um, you know what cards people may or may not have. Um, and the reason that you play the cards is you're trying to get sort of priority order, maybe to get the best treasure at each stop on the day. Um, there's treasures you might be trying to avoid that are curses. Um, you might be trying to do like a set collection with the map, treasure maps to get a bunch of points. You know, um, there's a, you may just be trying to score points with the cards themselves um, or mess with the cards that are on other people's boats because they're um, getting them points or whatever. Um, but again, it's just one of those, I think I know what my opponent is doing. I think I can do this, you know, and sometimes you'll just pull some ridiculous playoff and you'll get like two treasure maps in one stop or something, you know, you'll, you'll just do something ridiculous. And that's such a satisfying feeling. And other times, you know, you'll like, you'll think you've got it all figured out. And then the cards are like, what? what? <laughs> and you're just, you just end up getting screwed uh, because your opponents totally outplayed you. And both of those things are awesome, right? Like you can have fun getting your butt kicked in this game. Um, so anyway, I, that's why I really enjoy Libertalia. And that's what my true L pick is. Nice. I'm betting the babe crossed over with the geek. Huh? Huh? I don't know. I have no idea who crossed over. <laughs> well, we already did her game, so come on. Give us the Lords oh, of Waterdeep. It is not Lords of Waterdeep. Oh, well, I am surprised. It Shepard. is a recent It is a recent uh, Kinderspiel des Jahres nominee, and that is The Lost Ruins of Arnok. Interesting. All right, nice. so. What? <laughs> yeah, JJ? You approve? You forgot somebody. Oh, I did? Is this also your game? No, no, I missed I him. Do my L. Okay, rewind. Well, all right. Well, I'll talk button. about Arnok in the first. <laughs> right. I'll talk about Arnok too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Arnok is, a, you know, it's a worker placement and deck building game. Actually, I would say the deck building is stronger in the game. But um, you, uh, you've got actually two different types of things you're trying to collect. So you've got these items or I forgot what the pieces are called, um, artifacts or something. Uh, and then there's like this exploration component. You can move out to these uh, sites to explore and defeat these monsters. There's the research track, which you basically have to move up to get points uh, to win the game. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that it is a worker placement game. You have just a couple, you know, just two or three workers to use. So there's not it's not really strong uh, worker placement in that regard. Um, in fact, I played this game one time, almost completely ignoring worker placement, just cycling cards in my deck. Uh, I, at the end of some of my rounds, I had workers just left over sitting in my camp because I had used my cards for their abilities instead of using them for the symbols which allow you to move your workers. Uh, and I actually won doing that once. That's pretty interesting uh there's and that's one of the things i like about this game it's got i've tried three different paths to victory uh and one uh every one that i've tried um and uh there's interesting a lot of variety yeah. because the places that come out are different you can flip the instead of playing the bird temple you can play the snake temple i recommend the snake temple actually over the bird temple in the base game i haven't played the expansion um, the expeditions, which gives you asymmetric powers and stuff. It sounds cool. Um, but uh, yeah, very popular. Lost Ruins of Arnon. Well, the okay. good news about being forgotten, JJ, is you get the absolute final word of this video. Hey, hey. So. L for last, but not least. <laughs> L for last, but not least. That's fantastic. Yes. Okay, but before, before I take my turn, I got something to say about Arnon. Hold on a second, okay? So. I've played the expansion. You were correct about the base game. I'd rather play the other board than the regular board because you actually get, you know, you get more stuff. You get boots. You get your boots get and do stuff because it's annoying when you have boots and you got all that fear and they can't do anything but do a little campsite or whatever. But my gripe is the expansion. If you haven't played the expansion, go ahead and play it. But those asymmetrical powers, some of them, they're, they're very, very asymmetrical. Some are good and some are just hot garbage. But you think they're so, not balanced? Okay. Oh, no. They're, hell no, they're not balanced. It's just, uh, okay. But yeah, we, we can go into a whole video about that. But yeah, let, Lost Ruins Arnak, I I was there at uh, Escape WinterCon when we had it, when it came out, and it was the most, yeah, I played it, loved it, and 
yeah, some people can play it 50 times in a row and just have fun playing the same game over Corey. But uh, I can't do that that much. But I, yeah, it's a good game. You play it once, teaching new people. New people end up liking it very good. That's not my L because I figured that was going to happen. So my L, last but not least, is a game that I actually didn't get to play very often. I knew one person when I was very first gaming and went out to a game group and nobody else had this game. It was very strange. Played it a couple of times when he came around and he disappeared. So I actually had never seen anybody, and this was like eight years ago, that actually had this game and the expansions come out since then. And then all of a sudden I joined this group right here, this group specifically, and I see two people with it on their shelves. I'm very, I was like, what? what so i definitely want to play it again i would have bought it but it's still like never on sale hard to get and that game is last will yeah and there's an and that's... there's a newer version of it i don't even want to hear that right now the prodigal I club it. i've been playing oh, that's it like right. five six seven years so i'm very upset because it's always like 60 bucks when i try to buy it and then there's two people with it on their shelves so i um and, can explain and you should quickly. play and you should play with the expansion Thank you. Thank you very much. I would, like, I would like to play the regular game so I can play the expansion because I don't have, remember how to play the regular game. Just lose all my money. But real simple, Bruce's Millions. That's it. You ever watch that movie? Bruce That's Millions. it. Yep. You're trying to get rid of all your money. You're paying for housekeepers and butlers and, and, and buying stuff and building up your little tableau and you want to lose all your money at the end of the game and just make your whole family poor, dirt poor. That's the goal of the game. I don't I can't even compare it to any other game because I don't can't I can't even think of another game where you want to lose all your money like that. So like person, other than like the Prodigal's Club, which is the same designer, same thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, I played it, the guy who explained the game to me who had the game, he's like Bruce's millions, like I'm in. I don't even you ain't gotta yes. tell me anything else. I'm in. I like the artwork on it. You got the tableau, and I was like, Yep, I'm good. That's all it is for me. So last will, if you like blowing all your money. And then, you know, leaving the game in debt. I just, I just love it. So I'll be taking my horse to dinner this evening. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. So, exactly. so, so two things, there is a promo for this game, which is the, um, like messenger of the message or something. Yeah. That is, that should have been in the base game. That is one of the best promos of all time. You should absolutely have that. And the expansion is called getting sacked. You also have a job you have to lose because it's giving you income otherwise. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. I've heard about it and still have not gotten to play it. So <laughs> well, let me tell you a little more about how awesome it is. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good choice. Ah, oh, the last choice. I forgot you and you came in and you hit a home run. So thank you for batting cleanup for us. And ladies and gentlemen, that is J, K, and L of Gaming Through the Alphabet. I have been your co-host, Eric, also Ukla the Bach, or the ruiner of all hopes and dreams. I am here with my babe. Run. I am here with Steven. I am here with Lloyd. And I am here with Jim Jam JJ. And we are Just Got Played. We want to thank you all for stopping by and watching us. We're going to have another episode of this next time where we do, uh, what's the next three letters? M, N, and O. M, N. N and O. So get okay, your picks somebody, ready. You can play uh, Just Got Played, ABC's Bingo when we do our next video and uh, see how we do. So if you like us, like and subscribe us. We'll be here next time as well. And like I said, live Kaiju next time. You cannot miss this. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, babe, let's go play in Lacerda. Let's do it. Come on, kids, let's sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I will never forget how to say the alphabet. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs>